Hi, I'm Clark. And I'm Emily. On Sailing Vessel Temptress. And this is our May 2020 Adventure Log. Well, just like most people in the world, and probably you, we haven't done a whole lot of moving this month. Uh, our original plan this year was to go down to Panama and Colombia and that is definitely not going to be the case. Uh, we may end up going down to Luperon and the Dominican Republic. We may end up going back to the States, but for now, um, the legal thing for us to do is stay exactly where we are. Yeah, we also, our initial visa application isn't over till the end of June, and I've just been telling anyone that asks, I'm not thinking about till the end of June. And I'm glad, because the rules just keep changing. In fact, we got some new rules. Um, as of yesterday, we can go to the beach. Yes, that's we're off we're the boat. <laughs> filming here, not on our boat today. And let's see. Next, in in a week and a half, we get to sail around to other islands if we want to. Yep. And then in a month, friends can come and visit. The airplanes will start flying. Yep. So it's been. Uh, we've been locked down. I mean, that's as simple as it is. So um, we've been staying right here. Uh, the weather's been changing a little bit. It gets a little hotter and a little hotter and a little hotter all the time. Uh, it's now officially hurricane season. Lots of rain, which is good for us because we've been collecting a lot of it yep. in our awning that we have. So, um, yeah. We still make good. water and we really never put the collected water in our tanks. All our showers and drinking, just for convenience sake, is made water. But Emily collects water and then laundry and uh, cleaning up after sanding and all kinds of projects. It's just nice to have an unending supply of fresh water from that awning. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are and that's what the, the weather's like here. Um, it's not a bad place to be stuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Um, let's see, I guess we should talk about the budget, right? That's everybody's favorite part, it seems, <laughs> how much we spend to live this Well, we uh, spend very little life. when we're locked on our boat. Yeah, we do spend very little. Um, let's see, this month it was $371 for groceries, uh, which is, uh, keep in mind, we put about $3,000 worth of food on the boat last year, and I would say about 20% of what we eat in a given week is probably mm -hmm. from our food stores, and our food stores, I don't think we've eaten up even 10% of them. Um, but the fresh fruits and vegetables and things that we bought, $371 this month. We spent $113 on communication, which is a combination of Republic Wireless for my phone and keeping my phone number. We have a Google Fi phone, which is really our main uh, internet source while we're traveling between countries. However, because we're staying here for so long, we've taken up a local plan with something called Alive. So the total of all three of those adds up to $113. Uh, soon we'll be down, hopefully, just to the group of five. It's more than we normal, normally spend on communications, but, well, you know, we knew we were going to be in lockdown, and we were very happy to have the high-speed limitless data that we have with the local plan, so it's worth it. Mm -hmm. uh, fuel cost has been pretty low this month, uh, $41 for fuel. Uh, $40 for some alcohol, just buying uh, a little bit to top up. Um, we spent $20 at a restaurant one time um, when we were in town actually helping the island administrator with something. Uh, we went across the street and got some pizza. And we spent about $15 on trash for a total of $600. And that brings our 2020 monthly average to $728 per month, which is well within our budget. Our budget is $1,000 a month somewhere between 500 and 1,000, so we're right in there, so we're going to Yeah, people have been asking us in comments a lot, how much you spend overall and such. Last mm, fall, we did one of these videos, if you look back to it, you'll see all this information plus everything we put onto the boat, and yeah. that was a big list, so it does cost more than this. Um, and, and we'll periodically update you on the bit, but we're not going to do that every month. Yeah, so in December... Read, read the old logs. Watch in, the old logs. In December, we'll post all of our uh, expenditures for the whole year, but every month we're just kind of giving you what's going out, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess let's talk about projects. Okay. Doing a lot of projects, because there's nothing been else to do. <laughs> varnishing her butt off. Mm -hmm. uh, Temptress is getting glowy again. It's been a, uh, over a year since the, she last varnished things, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of surfaces now that are just, just beautiful like new furniture. Yeah, the last time I varnished was actually on a trip from here back to Florida. While we were sailing, I was varnishing a lot. <laughs> uh, and I said actually polyurethane. I use polyurethane. Uh, it's just, it works better. I like the way it goes on, and it works well for our purposes. So I'd say I'm about half done with the varnish. But we've been doing other things too. Yeah, um, about 
Jeez, like 10 years ago, I painted Tempest in the water, painted her top sides, you know, the sides of the hull. And it actually came out really good. You have to wait for just a flat day, but it can be done. I found a good paint that holds up pretty well. So we're doing that again, which means we're doing a lot of filling of chips and sanding. And uh, like right now, the, temp the boat looks like a mess. But uh, we're going to paint it in the next few days, and uh, she should look new again. Mm -hmm. And you've been working on deck boards a little bit at a time? Yep, yeah, that's an ongoing project you've heard about a lot, but uh, that will keep going an ongoing project. She has an old deck and she's a 50-year-old boat, but I'm just replacing them one board at a time. Mm -hmm. And you've been helping out a lot of other people this time too? Oh, uh, we've got some older friends that can't quite get around as well, so I helped one guy by taking the batteries out of his boat and putting new batteries in. Batteries are very heavy if they're lead. And another friend um, had a problem with his dinghy. It kind of fell off its hoist while they were sailing and broke a bit. So we fixed that up and uh, helped them out with a few other things. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've been doing a, a lot of computer things, right? Yep. I uh, started editing some memoirs, I guess you would call them, <laughs> interviews of the same friend who's a little bit older. Uh, he's got cancer and he's thinking ahead to what he wants to leave for his uh, family and his friends. So he had another boater uh, do some interviews with him about his life and they sent me the audio file so I've been editing that down to uh, a format that he'll be able to share with people. And there's also another cruiser here who's writing a book about strategic planning, which is something that I did a lot of in my last job with my company. So I've been doing some editing and giving him some suggest suggestions on his book as well. So mm -hmm. lots of good things going on. So our daily activities this month have just kind of been all projects, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just not a lot to do when you're on the boat. Mm -hmm. uh, what's been the best part of this month? Oh, the freedoms, uh, being able to go to the beach, <laughs> to walk on the shore. Mm -hmm. uh, just a week or so ago, we could go into uh, the grocery store ourselves without having yep. things delivered. That was wonderful. Upcoming in about a week, uh, we'll actually be able to sail to other islands. Um, I guess you really have controls over the islands that have COVID, but most of the Bahamas is COVID free. So we can sail around those islands if we choose to. And in a couple weeks, uh, mm -hmm. commercial planes and boats can come in and out, so um, we may be able to have friends or guests come and stay with us. So that'll be that'll be nice mm -hmm. to feel less isolated and to feel more like a human being again and be able to travel. So, what about the worst part? Well, um, this is supposed to be a really bad hurricane season. And I believe them because we've already had one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, we're, are we up to sea, aren't we? Three name yeah. storms already, and it's just crazy early. I'm always still sailing by this time. I don't really worry about getting someplace safe till July, but it's a little different this year. So we have to think a little more seriously about what we're going to do for the summer, where we're going to uh, seek shelter if something came. Yep, we've got plans and backup plans. Yep. What's the other uh, bad thing? Anything else you didn't like this month? No, I think everything was pretty good this month. Like yeah. I said, like, this is a great place to be for lockdown. Yeah. And the air and the water and... It's so, quite beautiful yeah, it's and, um, you know, you guys, like, if you're in the States or Europe, you're kind of used to it by now and you've got an idea around the the risk involved and wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. And, you know, you have a risk in your life, like driving a car, very risky, but you get used to it, it's not a thing. But we're actually thinking about maybe going someplace where people have the disease. We have been so absolutely safe here. Nobody on the island, nobody within hundreds of miles of us mm -hmm. ha is, has a symptom. Yeah, so, significant. Yeah, and you know, we're thinking, well, should we invite somebody out? Ooh, they might have cooties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Or, you know, just the regulations part of it, you know, it's just, it's much more complicated than it used to be. Yeah. And it'll probably get more complicated. Well, that's the main reason why, well, we had a, a, a bunch of projects to do, so we curtailed or delayed our trip down to Panama, Colombia, which was going to be this season. Uh, we might have turned that back on because we got a lot of things done that needed to be done, but... Um, now I'm really glad we didn't go because I want to be up at this latitude when the immunizations come out. I want to be able to say either we hop on a plane or we sail temptress over to Miami and get a shot in the arm and say, ah, it's over. Mm -hmm. Because if we were in Panama, Colombia, it's just the way the world is. This is probably going to be developed in the U.S. or Europe. Uh, Moderna is the one I think is going to get the antiviral, the, 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 the protection first. 
and it's going to be available in the U.S. first or Europe because that's where the money is. They're going to compete for who gets the first batches, and I want the first batch. And if I was in Colombia, we'd be after the Colombians. It would be hard for mm -hmm. us to get inoculated. So I want to step here where we can, uh, well, we can be safer. Yeah, one of several reasons to stay here. Yeah. So, um, another best part I think has been the air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, we probably mentioned that too much, but oh my god, uh, we're trusting it more, we're running it more. You know, I first started, I, was like, I don't know if it's going to work tomorrow, it works yesterday. And now it's like, oh, it looks like it's going to rain, shut the boat down. It looks like there might be a few bugs, shut the boat down. It's just a little too hot, shut the boat down. Yeah. And turn on a switch, easy. Uh, we've got this little tablet here, and uh, um, among other things, among also being notes for our videos, uh, it can play movies. So we set this up in the app cabin and watch a TV show or a movie and then go to bed in a nice cool comfort. Yeah, it really makes a difference, uh, especially as the heat is getting yeah. uh, higher. Mark my words. Um, years and years ago, in 1999, I bought a spare refrigeration compressor uh, and uh, took, because I was going down to Mexico. And I contacted my guy, he's not a, not a boat guy, refrigeration guy, and I said, you know, I want a spare whatever. He said, no, no. The Dan Foss guy just came by and made this really good presentation. Their new compressor looks absolutely wonderful. And I said, well, it sounds good. How reliable is it? I haven't a clue, but it, it sounds wonderful. So I bought it. And I got down to Mexico. Within a couple months in Mexico, my refrigeration compressor failed. So I put it on half the power. It just was wonderful. Now, every single boat out sailing that has refrigeration has this family of compressors. It's just the way to go. Well, this compressor I'm using in the air conditioning and why we're getting away with running it off solar and batteries, it uses about a fifth, an eighth, somewhere in there of the power of, of a, a commercial air conditioning system. Mark my words, uh, this is the first one on a boat. Uh, until now, it's only like gone into military cooling systems for electronic packages. But it's going to catch on and everybody's going to have at least one cabin of air conditioning that goes cruise sailing. Because it's cheap-ish, it's affordable, it's practical, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. And yes, there will be an air conditioning video. Every video we put out since we mentioned air conditioning, somebody says, Where's the air conditioning video? Where's the air conditioning video? So we'll We want to do it well. List. There'll be graphics. There's so much to think about. It's a little complicated. Got to decide how much we tell about and how much we don't because some of it just confusing. Mm -hmm. I think what I'm going to do is describe it all and show it all and talk about it and then say if you want this on your boat right now, it's not a product yet. If you really want to make it yourself, probably the best thing to do, we have got a deal on Patreon where you can ask us about anything. Sign up on Patreon, support us a little so that we have that phone conversation that we can't have over YouTube and tell me about your boat and I'll get you all set right yeah. up. And you then can you'll do have that a good today if system. you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, because it'll take us probably another month to get out a video about air conditioning, but if you're really interested, yeah, just join Patreon. Yeah, sure. Get you going tomorrow. Yeah. We pride ourselves on living intentionally. We like that we sail, but really what we do is live intentionally. We try not to be a sheep. How weren't we a sheep to this month? Uh, <laughs> uh, so intentional living, like we said, like we've been very intentional about investing in the community of boaters here and keeping everybody taken care of and kind of this good karma of give and take going. And now that the community is smaller, we're down to like 15 boats now, mm -hmm. um, we've been switching our focus inward a little bit to, we've burnt out a little bit. You know, we've got all these projects that we sort of delayed on our boat that we're getting back to all these projects that we're doing and just taking a look at our life and our choices and we probably need to eat a little less pizza and ice cream and drink a little less and do a little less social media scrolling, which we've got, sort of gotten into the habit of doing during isolation. So we've been starting to write um, some videos about our intentional life philosophy beyond. We kind of started it last year with your video about how you retired at 36 and it sort of evolved into a very financial side of intentional living, but there's this other side of intentional living about deciding what direction you want your life to go and how do you make decisions that jive with your um the, the kind of life that you want to live and so we started a lot of writing and we have some things coming out about um our family planning about our relationship our kind of intentional marriage by design what we've kind of come up with for ourselves and why did we leave the u.s and these sorts of questions that people ask us mm -hmm. um that have far more complicated answers than than some of the other Q&A videos that we've done. Half of that retiring at 36 video that I did is just my story up till now, and then the other half was some pointers on how to do it. 
I want to hear Emily's story. Mm -hmm. I want to hear her do a video about what got her here, what got her into the mindset, that, you know, let her be intentional. Yeah, and tiny houses and, you know, all the things that I did before I met you, too, kind yeah. of were part of my intentional living philosophy. So anyway, we'll share uh, bits and pieces of that along the way. If you guys have questions about that or questions for us, you can leave them in the comments. And uh, speaking of questions, mm -hmm. um, we want to really involve our patrons this month. Uh, we were taking a look at our numbers recently, and what are we up to for? We are just a couple hundred away from 25,000 subscribers. And uh, that's kind of a big number. It sounds very round. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, you know, push us over. Subscribe right now, right now. Uh, <laughs> invite your friends. Invite right? your friends, yeah. Uh, but, you know, having 25,000 subscribers in about, well, we had a thousand a year ago December. So, like, in a, a year and a third, we've got 25,000 subscribers. That's pretty fast, That's bro. pretty awesome. Yeah. But our, um, we have so many different kinds of subscribers. We have people interested in financial, we have people interested in sailing, we have people interested in my boat building videos. We have all kinds of these different things. So, um, we've got 31 patrons right now who can send us messages back and forth. And we've put a message out to all of you who are on our Patreon page saying, you know, what do you want to see us do for videos? What questions do you have? Mm -hmm. um, and we really want to hand over the control kind of for this summer to you guys. And yeah. say, you know, what do you guys want to know about? And if you need advice or you need uh, somebody to bounce ideas off of, some of them will definitely turn into videos. Yeah, we did this last summer. You'll see a lot of videos in our catalog that say hey, Q&A, I believe, mm -hmm. on them. And it's just a short video, which is surprising for us, <laughs> about one question and quite the answer of that one question. And they go in surprising directions. Yeah. And some of them are just, how do you do this? And some of them, what do you think about this? So uh, it can go either way. Please give us some more questions. Yeah, leave your questions. You can leave them here in this video. You can leave them in another video if you like. Or uh, best of all, you know, send them on Patreon and we'll get on the phone and talk to them <laughs> about them if you want. Um, we can bounce answers and ideas off of each other. So. Mm -hmm. So that'll be going on probably for the next few months. All summer we'll be involving our Patreons more. Mm -hmm. And I think that's about it for this month. Did you forget anything? No, no. Um, I think that's about it too. Right. Thanks again, Bye. everybody, for watching. Bye.